Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the talk. Uh, my name is Hedra Gandhi and I'm a data scientist at Julia Computing. And I'm going to be talking you through uh, this entire process of an introduction to how to write a web app in pure Julia with very or little knowledge of how you know web technologies usually work. So the first natural question that might come up is why? And the simple answer to that is that in many cases it is expected to publish the output of a piece of work to the web, right? And not only that, it is uh, really important for when a project is supposed to be made available to a very, very large audience. And more than that, it is important to, uh, for things like interactively tinkering with workflows to see whether or not a training model is working all right. And not only this, all of this can be done in a manner which is very pretty and at the same time very intuitive to look at. And you know the, the idea of what is being uh, you know, presented is very clear. And there are a lot of frameworks that exist for all of this. But a problem with all of this is that it requires the knowledge of a lot of these different frameworks, be it JavaScript as a language, or you know how reactive programming works, things of that nature. And that is really not part of the core competency for a lot of folks, right? But they still want these tools available for uh, you know all of these reasons. So one thing is that either everyone has to learn all of these things, or they can use an alternative like Dash. Now, Dash is a project by the Plotly team, which is aimed directly at uh, you know creating these analytical web apps without having the knowledge of these different tools. And Dash.jl is a port of this very popular framework to the Julia language. And uh, I really want to go through you know how we're going to be working through it, right? And uh, just for a given idea of what we're going to be doing is basically we're going to take an image and we're going to run it through a neural network and we want to basically plot the results of the output. Uh, and uh, the idea here is that we want to basically focus on the entire pipeline rather than the individual parts of it, right? So let's dive into it, shall we? So I've set up a repo here and you can uh, just go here to you know follow along uh, with the code that's available. Uh, for this project. So I have set up this uh, very, very simple training script, and this is nothing special. It's out of the Flux model zoo. And uh, the idea is that you would replace this with your larger project, with whichever uh, way it might be. So here we're just training a simple handwritten digits data set called MNIST on a convolutional model, and we're saving the results uh, out of it. And the interesting part now is that uh, we want to start serving it through a web app. So I've written a few FAQs and a lot of commentary around uh, the different parts of it so people can you know, take some more time and understand every uh, little piece a bit better. But uh, for now, what I'm going to do is move along and see basically how the training side of it interacts with the serving side of it in some sense. So here you can see, I'm just going to be loading my model and uh, the pre-trained weights. So this means when someone is uh, developing this web app, they don't really need any you know, large resource to understand the problem statement in order to write this web app, right? Which means that uh, people without very specialized knowledge can also dive in and uh, start contributing directly. So the first part that we're interested in about our web app is, you know, we want to choose a sort of a CSS library. And in this case, I've gone with foundation CSS, but this could be any CSS files that, uh, you know, already exist are part of frameworks or custom. And Dash already provides us with a lot of functionality in how to make sure that they're lazy loaded, loaded through a CDN and so forth. So the first task that we want to do is create this Dash object in the first place, right? And uh, we're going to pass it our style sheets as well as a location for where we can find our assets. So in this case, I just have a very simple image which we can use for you know testing purposes. But uh, for larger projects, this assets folder will basically contain all the assets. The next part is that we want to work with the app layout. Uh, one thing to note here is that folks who are already familiar with how markup languages like HTML work, this would be very very familiar, right? So uh, we're used to working with HTML divs, the H3 tags, and uh, you know the different input types, graphs, images, all of that. So all of that is completely available in Dash through these uh, functions like HTML div, HTML h1, and these do the expected thing. 
So what we're going to be doing here is basically designing a specification for what our web page would eventually look like. And uh, this just has a simple message along with, you know, a way to take input from the users. This is just a text field. And at the same time, a, an HTML div, which is currently empty, which will basically host the output of our results. So this is the interesting thing about and the magic source behind how uh, dash.jl actually works and what makes it so special. And that is that it, re it relies on these callbacks. What a callback does essentially is whenever any change happens inside some areas that we're going to be interested in looking at. So in this case, I'm looking at the input of my image path and I want the value field from it, right? So whenever there is any change, it will try to you know, run this function that we write here and return the output to wherever we specify the output or need go. So in this case, uh, you'll notice that I have an input value. This is going to be a string. And uh, I can now return some very, very simple things. So for example, if I have an empty string, I just want to you know, send a little you know, nice image just to make the app feel more lively. But in general, most of our heavy lifting will happen here, right? Where uh, if I get a, uh, a URL, I really want to just download it and uh, take that image, resize it to whatever my model is expecting. And the good thing about this uh, workflow is that since this is entirely in Julia, we have access to all the uh, Julian features that we really have come to love. Right? So it means that all of my logging uh, infrastructure is right here. My performance infrastructure is right here. My, you know, features like multiple dispatch, uh, you know, the type system, everything is available to me in one swell field. So the more interesting thing that we're going to be uh, showing the users is first we'll show them the image that they've actually, you know, given us. And the next thing that we'll show is what happens if uh, that image is run through the neural network. So you would notice that I have uh, made a basic bar chart and in that bar chart, what I have is uh, the output of my model with the image, right? And that's basically it. So it basically uses this DCC graph function where I can, you know, give uh, my my ID to it as I would any other HTML object and basically just have the figure be rendered for me as a plotly graph. Um, and after that, a simple run server command would give me the server running on my local uh, host. So that's really all there is to it. As any good, uh, you know, author, I have my one that I made earlier. So as you can see, everything is right here. And uh, so yeah, this is the image that we spoke about with the uh, which happens when my uh, my input is empty. Let me grab an image URL. So this is a random image URL from the MNIST data set, right? So this is the kind of input that we can expect to see. Um, once it's done, as you see, we have our graph rendered neatly and uh, with an image that we saw earlier to show showcase alongside that. And the really cool part of it is that uh, by just adding something like a proc file, so this just says web julia hyphen project, the file and a port number, we can also uh, deploy this entire thing onto uh, Heroku, for example. So this way it is easier for us as well to deploy the same code that we're you know, working on developing. Um, so yeah, this was basically a good look at uh, you know, how do you write your own web app. Unfortunately, I'm running out of time here. So uh, yeah, thanks for uh, joining me.